plus 40 seconds. It's one hell of a sight from here. We see it arcing right over top of us. We see 33 out of 33 Raptor engines lit on Super Heavy as it starts to ascend skyward. Coming up on maximum aerodynamic pressure, then only about a minute and a half until we get into hot staging. Wow, Dan, that was incredible. <laughs> we could feel the building shaking here, feel the, the vehicle's power. Now we're just about a minute away from shutting down those engines on the booster. Again, this booster is flying for its second time today. All right, so hot staging coming up a little under a minute. We're going to see all but the three center engines turn off on the booster. So our version of Miko, most engines cut off. And then just a few seconds later, hoping to see six engines ignite on ship to push it away. All right, hot staging, about 30 seconds. And definitely keep an eye on which way the booster flips. First ever directional flip we're going for today should flip straight up. See those engines powering down? Booster engine cutoff. Ship ignition. Stage separation. Incredible flip by Super Heavy Booster, and you can see those six engines, those three engines on the ship ignited. Six healthy Raptors <laughs> running on ship on its way to space. Peak that engine view. Booster doing the boost back. Chris, how's it looking over there in Hawthorne, man? It is looking Raptor chamber pressure is nominal. It is looking absolutely incredible here in Hawthorne. As we said, six healthy engines on ship. We've got 13 out of 13 engines on the booster. Now down to those three, which is what we expect in the final moments of the boost back burn. Now, as a reminder, we are not recovering the super heavy booster today. We are instead going to do booster some... Booster shut down. And there we had a good shutdown of the boost back burn. Next up will be the jettison of that hot stage ship ring. avionics power and telemetry nominal. Great call out there that everything looking nominal aboard the super heavy vehicle, which is returning to Earth. And we're going to be doing some experiments with it, including a higher angle of attack re-entry, uh, as well as some engine tests as it gets closer to the Gulf. We are, again, because of these tests not recovering it, we are sending it to the Gulf on purpose to do those tests. But again, you see the booster on the left-hand side of your screen. You see ship with six healthy engines continuing its ascent to its planned suborbital trajectory. Uh, everything going very well so far for Starship's ninth flight. Now uh, four minutes, 15 seconds in. Great views from inside of the uh, aft engine area of ship there, looking at those uh, three sea level and three Raptor engines on the right-hand side of your screen. The booster doing its LOX dump, that liquid oxygen dump. So because we don't need some of that liquid oxygen propellant in its tanks, we vent that propellant out to lessen the booster's mass as it comes in for its landing. Just absolutely gorgeous views watching these two vehicles do their respective things in the skies over Texas here today. And Dan, we're approaching the five minute mark into the flight. Super Heavy is descending rapidly. Uh, what can we expect here in the next few minutes as it does no, its I'm atmospheric directly. tests? Yeah, now as we had talked about, Super Heavy might not have a very smooth ride down. We're gonna be putting <laughs> it through this higher angle of attack. So we're kind of pitching it up a tiny bit, increasing drag. We've done this in wind tunnels. We've done this in computer modeling. It shows that sometimes the control isn't great, uh, but only one way to really prove it out, and that's to get real world data. So here comes Super Heavy. It should be igniting for its landing burn in just about 40 seconds from now. 
And we are going to relight 13 engines, then bring that down to three engines. As, as, as we talked about earlier, we will be intentionally Pusher, shutting yes, down. We will be shutting down one of those three center engines intentionally to push the limits of the super heavy booster. Super Raptor chamber pressure is nominal. And continuing to see six healthy engines on the ship, three sea level and three vacuum engines still ignited as the super heavy booster is making its way back down to earth. We can see those grid fins doing some heavy work. Booster landing start out. Ignited for our landing burn. And may have ended with that landing burn. Does look like we lost telemetry from the booster once we started into that landing burn. Did you see a confirmation that the booster did demise? So the booster's flight ending before it was able to get through landing burn, but again, we are not bringing that back. We we're expecting it to make a hard splash down in the Gulf. We were getting live data back the entire time through that high angle of attack flight. So that was something that was really vital for us to get during this reuse. First free flight of booster in the books. All right, ship has about two minutes left. Yeah, in about two minutes, we expect all six Raptor engines to shut down. That will be Seco. Basically, second engine or second stage engine shut off. And these are some incredible views, Dan, from the aft end of the ship. Watching as the engines stay ignited with the Earth in the background. As always, the Starship Avionics team, the techs. I think we just heard <laughs> the booster. <laughs> uh, but... All right, we got about a minute left into this burn. All eyes definitely on ship as we get through the final stages into its ascent. We're expecting it to start to cut those engines off in about 45 seconds. Terminal guidance. All right, just about 30 seconds to go. We're in terminal guidance in the final stages of this ascent burn. We did see shutdown of the Raptor engines. We do stagger these, so we do the Raptors first. Those three have shut down successfully. Sea level's still running. Ship engine cut off. Ship, Ship engine Nominal cut off. Insertion. The three most beautiful words in the English language. And great call out that we had nominal insertion. <sighs> An incredible flight test so far today. We reflew a super heavy booster for the very first time in nine test flights. Ship is in its orbital trajectory. Again, it's going to remain suborbital for its mission today. But it ignited all saved. It ignited all six of its engines and made it all the way through Seco just now. Hey, Chris, how's it going over there in Hawthorne, man? How's everybody doing? I think the elation and the excitement and the happiness at what uh, we just saw achieved uh, carried through across all of our sites. Uh, what 
an incredible view to see Starship back orbiting the Earth uh, just under 11 minutes into our mission. Absolutely exciting to see all of this and super pumped, especially to see all of the team's hard work in action here today. As guaranteed, it has been an exciting evening so far for Starship's ninth test flight. We lifted off a little bit after 6.30 p.m. after a couple of holds that, we, that were triggered at the T minus 40 second mark, but we were able to clear those one on the Raptor, one on the tower, and we were able to lift off successfully from Starship base 33 out of 33 Raptor engines lit on the Super Heavy, all six engines lit on ship, bringing it to its planned suborbital trajectory around Earth. But as Dan said, we've got a lot still coming up in our flight sequence. So coming up at about T plus 18 minutes, 26 seconds, we'll have the first deployment of simulated Starlink satellites planned from Starship. That will be followed at about T plus 37 minutes and 49 seconds by the relight of a single Raptor sea level engine in space. This is going to help us gather data on our ability to do a deorbit burn for future Starship missions that will go orbital. And then, of course, one of the biggest tests yet to come is the new heat shield modifications to Starship. And that'll start with re-entry into Earth's atmosphere at about the T plus 45 minute mark, which should take about 16, 18 minutes to complete. And now today's re-entry is going to test that heat shield like we said. Uh, specifically, how Starship will hold up to 100 missing heat shield tiles on its thermal protection system. Now, we purposely took those 100 tiles off over very critical areas of the vehicle to be able to safely test on a flight like this suborbital trajectory into the Indian Ocean what might happen on an operational flight in those areas if we were to lose the primary heat shield tile over Starship. So very critical test coming up. And then after that, we'll have the final descent where we will again be pushing Starship to its limits. We definitely pushed the booster to its limits today to gather data, and we're gonna be doing the exact same thing on that ship, seeing how the ship handles various flight conditions that we will need it to fly in as we look to one day soon bring ships back to Starbase for catch and reuse. In a few minutes, Starship will deploy eight Starlink simulators, similar in size to our next generation Starlink satellites. The Starlink simulators will be on the same suborbital trajectory as Starship, meaning they will passively re-enter the atmosphere just like Starship. With tests like these, we can see how Starship's payload deploy systems work in flight while ensuring that this simulator satellites pose no safety risk to people on Earth or for other, other satellites in orbit. Look inside of the <laughs> payload bay of Starship. You can see them stacked down in the middle of your view. There's kind of four on either side, so they're sandwiched on top of each other, a stack of four right behind each other. And then we're gonna pop the door open. It's on the right side of your screen. So we'll see that open up and then start firing those Starlink simulators out into space. We are expecting the payload door to open in a little over a minute from now. And then once that payload door is open, about a couple minutes later is when we will start start dispensing those yeah, Starlink simulators. That's a what view a great right view. at the bottom of the <laughs> stack. So should be should be able to see them kind of firing out from right there. So really cool. And eventually these these are going to carry dozens of the next generation of Starlink satellite into space, and those are going to enable some truly insane things in terms of speeds from space. Now we are expecting the payload door to op open any moment now. So we're watching out for that. Again, you're looking at the inside of Starship as it's suborbital. Well, we heard the door open was in progress. It was unable to actuate all the way open, so they are gonna close it back up. Hal told me no. <laughs> said, I'm sorry, Dan. <laughs> Can't do that. Looks like we won't get the door open today. And the ship is on its suborbital trajectory. As you can see in some of the views and from some of the telemetry, we are in a little bit of a spin. We did spring a leak in some of the fuel tank systems inside of Starship, which a lot of those are used for your attitude control. And so at this point, We've essentially lost our attitude control with Starship. We are still on a path toward re-entry. We are suborbital, so no matter what, we are going to enter. However, this lowers the chances for it to be a controlled re-entry. So if you think back to Flight 3, when we had something similar happen, um, just the 
end symptom of a loss of attitude control. We were in a roll by the time we hit re-entry. So we are going to re-enter. We should hopefully still have views. Um, the Starlink satellites are pretty robust to still maintaining contact. We've got four of those terminals on the vehicle, and they're pretty robust to maintaining contact, even when we are in a spin, essentially. Um, so we should hopefully continue to keep live views. It's going to still be dark um, until we get a little bit closer to entry as we are a little bit. Uh, we're coming up on Africa. I believe we do swing just to the south of that continent. Um, and by the time we start heading out over the Indian Ocean, we'll start heading into a sunrise. So not looking great with a lot of our on-orbit objectives for today where we were hoping to do the PEZ deploy and relight an engine and then really importantly get into that controlled entry to really put the heat shield through the ringer. Uh, nonetheless, Starship marching forward towards that re-entry over the Indian Ocean. So we'll continue to hang with it and give you any updates as things continue to change. At this point, we had lost attitude control of the ship and entered into a spin. The team made the call to do what's called passivate the vehicles, so we're essentially venting all of the remaining propellant overboard, and it's gonna make an uncontrolled re-entry. Views are gonna be a little bit scarce potentially, as again, we are in essentially a tumble. We had lost that attitude control. Um, so Starlink, when it's able to connect, able to feed this down. Uh, we are at the phase where we would expect entry to start uh, within the next minute or so. So we are entering uncontrolled, but again, we're entering into an airspace and a sea space that is cleared and monitored in advance of launch and before we get to this phase. And with the views that we are able to see, you are seeing a lot of that plasma build up uh, during re-entry. We do expect the vehicle to see about 1,400 degrees Celsius. And there you can see the, the flap uh, feeling that temperature there. Ran into some issues on orbit. We weren't able to deploy the Starlinks. We eventually lost attitude control, dealing with some propellant links inside of the ship. Um, and we did lose attitude control. And just to confirm, we did lose contact with the ship officially a couple of minutes ago. So that brings an end to the ninth flight test.